What do you make of what is happening here? Is this just a period of indigestion that the market is going to have to go through, a resetting of expectations? After we found a clearing price, we can move on. Is, is, is that too simplistic or is that basically what is happening? I would never say good morning, football as well. Um, I would never say anything that you said is simplistic. Uh, but uh, I would say it's more, it's deeper than that. So, so those are transactions that were uh, consummated a while ago, and the debt markets obviously have have faltered dramatically, largely given volatility and largely given increasing interest rates and people's appetite for risk. So it's not a function of simply clearing. Uh, uh, clearing the balance sheets, the banks, so that they can get back into the market. It's really a question of when we get to equilibrium. When, when do we get to a point where people are comfortable that there is a, uh, a consistent view on what rates should be uh, and that, uh, that banks mm -hmm. can absorb credit and sell that credit into the market with consistency? That won't happen for a while. What does a while mean? Well, a while means is, uh, I think, in my view, uh, when we all believe that we have uh, a certain view as to where the interest rate environment will end up. So until the Fed stops cutting, or stops increasing, I should say, until the Fed yep. uh, gives the signal or gives the market the signal to some consistency in rates, it's very hard for banks to be willing to take these obligations on their books and take the risk that's over time before they sell it. Understand what banks are doing here. They're not buyers of debt, they're sellers of debt. So all they're doing is acting as a conduit to the, to the public markets uh, in order to effectuate transactions, and there's always a time delay. So their issue is simply, can I sell it, and what's the clearing price? And what they've realized over the past six months <clears throat> is they, uh, they, they obviously were wrong on clearing price. Not their fault, necessarily, since the market you know, has made an unprecedented move in increasing interest rates, but this is just the vagaries of our business. So I would tell you that the public debt markets for uh, below uh, investment-grade credit is going to be shut for a while. Yes. What does that mean for deal flow, Mark? Well, it means some of the larger transactions uh, will have a more difficult time uh, getting financing because, generally speaking, that's where they got their money from, which is the, the big the fully distributed bank markets. Uh, but the good news, and this we're seeing this today, the good news is the private credit markets have grown dramatically. I mean, these were, uh, I don't know, it was an $80 billion market back in uh, back in 2008. It's an $800 billion market wow. uh, in the U.S., a, a trillion two globally. And these institutions are buying credit. They're underwriting credit and, and, and buying risk. Mm -hmm. uh, so they don't care about, I mean, they care about where interest rates go, but they're looking at a long-term investment, putting money to work. And so while they're tightening up, and yes, <clears throat> the increased volatility in interest rates doesn't help their cause, and so they widen spreads, um, and they can get more conservative given, given some of their uh, uh, concerns about mm -hmm. the economy, they're still putting money to work. And we're seeing, even for larger transactions, and there have been a number of them, yeah. uh, that they've stepped up and put money to work. Mark. What about the UK? It feels like it's, an, on one hand, an entirely different beast. On the other hand, signals what could happen as liquidity is rapidly withdrawn, but there's still money floating around uh, from the government. Um, what are you noticing there? It's a, a more complex situation. And I think uh, the difference between the UK market and our market is the economy there has been troubled for quite some time. So people talk about uh, mistrust's uh, increase in uh, decrease in, in, in taxes as being the instigator for the pound falling, but in fact the pound was falling well before that. So theirs is an economy that needs a bit of stimulus uh, in yep. order to get back in competition with the U.S. You know, we have our issues with our own economy, but it's not terrible. It's not bad. I mean, there are many companies <clears throat> that are doing quite well. Um, some of the consumer cyclicals are having problems because 
you know, they were they were buying into what they thought were pandemic level demands, which hasn't come to fruition. Not a huge surprise, yep. but you know, they were ch chasing sales, and they'll have to restructure, and that's fine. But we'll come out of this okay. The UK, you know, they have to get that dollar pound parity or dollar pound relationship back into a more historic level, or else they're going to have a tough time uh, driving their economy. Mm -hmm. Mark, are there any opportunities outside the United States that you're looking at right now? I, as you say, the, the, the currency alone is making assets abroad cheap. Is that where the opportunity lies right now? Or do you think the volatility is just going to scare people off? So when you look at corporate buyers uh, and to the extent that they have uh, foreign companies on their radar, this will be a, a very good time for them to pounce. Obviously, you're getting a 20% discount by virtue of currency. When you look at where the big money is today, which is in the private equity market, and there's still an enormous amount of dry powder in the, in the trillion dollar range, uh, that's still focused domestically in a, in a significant way. Now, obviously, there are, there are uh, euro-based funds that invest overseas, uh, but that's not taking advantage of cross-border interest rates.